Consider a program that calculates the amount of interest earned on some savings. Now the steps involved in the computer program that would do this are as shown here. You would need to read the balance of the customer's savings account. You would then calculate the amount of interest on this balance and then you would add that interest to the balance. And this shows the sequence of steps necessary to do this for an individual customer. And the thing is, what if we wanted to do this for all of the customers in the bank? Well, what we can do for more than one customer is this. We can perform these steps, as we've already seen, and then for the next customer, we can perform the steps again. And for the next customer, perform the steps again. Now, if we look very carefully at all of this, we can see that, in fact, this is the first sequence we've got, and then we've got the second sequence, and we can see it's the same as the first sequence, and here's the third, which is the same as the second, and obviously the same as the first. Now, this is nuts, because if you were going to actually write a computer program where you had to type in all of these steps for each of the customers, what happened if there was a million customers? Will you be there all day typing? So clearly, this is not what we do when we write computer programs. What we have, we have what's called an iteration or a repetition construct that allows us to execute this same sequence of steps over and over again. And that's what this video is about. We're going to look at that construct or one of the constructs that's available to us in Python. And we're going to be looking at the while iterator or the while repetition construct. Here we can see the three steps again. We read the balance of the customer's savings account, calculate the amount of interest on the balance, add the interest to the balance, and then we go round and repeat this for the next customer. We read the balance, we calculate the interest, we add the interest to the balance, then we go back to the beginning and we go through the steps again. Now the number of times we go round depends on how many customers have savings accounts. So we do it for that amount of times. If there's a thousand customers, we go round the loop to make sure that we execute this sequence a thousand times and so on. Here you can see I've taken the sequence and I've placed it inside an appropriate flowchart. And at the beginning of the flowchart, you can see there's this diamond shape. And inside there, it's asking a question, another customer. Now, this diamond shape is something that appears in flowcharts, and it represents a question or a test that will return true or false. Now, on this particular case, if it's true, then the flow through the program is in this direction. We execute every step of this sequence, where the sequence is inside a loop. Now, the reason why I say it's inside the loop is because when we get to execute this, you can see we follow these arrows round, and it brings us back to the question again, another customer. And if there is another customer, it's true. Then we execute these steps in turn again, and then we come back round the loop to the test again. And of course, we go round this loop every time there is another customer that we have to calculate the interest on, the interest on their savings account. However, when we come back to this test and it's false, we go in this direction and we carry on with what would be the rest of the program. So what we have here is a suitable flowchart that represents the iteration round a loop, often called repetition. And we'll see that in Python we have this expressed as a while construct. Let's have a look at the flowchart in isolation. Here we can see it. We can see we have a test here inside this diamond shape. And when this test is true, we execute these program statements. Now when this test is false, we can see that we go in this direction and we do not execute those program statements. So we have two things that can happen here. When this test is true, we enter the loop. And when the test is false, we leave the loop and we carry on with what would be the rest of the program. So we can see that for this particular construct here, there are essentially two things that can happen. And we can show it with this dot. Let's imagine this dot now is going to flow into the test and it's true. So we go round and round as that test is true. And as soon as it was false, we saw we actually left the loop and we carried on what would be the rest of the program. So if we have a look at that again, here we can see the flow that occurs when the test is true. And as soon as it's false, we exit the loop. We've left the iteration. 
Let's imagine this loop is part of a program, and this dot that's going to appear now, well that's where the rest of the program was. Now let's imagine we're flowing from that and we come to this test here, which by the way is often called a conditional test, or a condition. Now this could be false, not true, on the first time we enter the test, in which case we go in this direction. So on this particular occasion, we never entered the loop, and we have to realize that this is one of the possibilities we get with the while iteration. That is, we may never enter the loop. Of course, on other occasions, we might go around the loop a million times. Who knows? It depends on the condition of the test. And for that reason, this is often called a non-deterministic loop, which means we don't know how many times we're going to go around the loop. It depends on the test. Now, this is all best explained with proper examples of the use of the while loop but you need to bear in mind that when you use this construct you might never enter the loop you might go around the loop just once twice a thousand times ten thousand times etc having a mental picture of a flowchart for a while loop is important because it gives us an understanding of the control flow through the loop i.e when we enter the loop and when we don't an alternative is shown here. This is an NS chart representation of a while loop. And what we can see, it has a kind of upside down L, and then it has an area that's a rectangular area that says program statements. Now this represents the while loop. If this test here is true, then we execute whatever these program statements are. Then we have to realize we go back to the test again, and if it's true, we execute these program statements. And we may go back a thousand times and execute the program statements each time. However, if we go to this test here, and it happens to be false, then we do not execute these program statements. We carry on with what would be the rest of the program down here. It is therefore possible that we could come to here from the rest of the program, find out that this is false on the first time we do the test, in which case we wouldn't execute these program statements, we would carry on with what would be the rest of the program. So the NS chart is a very useful chart to enable us to show our algorithms in a non-coding way. But of course, once we show the algorithms using these NS charts, we can convert them to Python and in truth to any other language we like as well. Here we can see a program that contains a while loop and it's not implementing any specific specification. In fact, you could describe it as a nonsense program, but it's just designed to show the structure of the while and we can use it to explain how the while loop actually functions. But let's have a look at the general structure of this particular program first. Here you can see I have a program statement which prints a string to the console. Here I've got a variable that I assigned zero. And this slot here is the while loop, which is followed by this program statement, which prints a string to the console. But this is not part of the while loop. And I can tell it's not part of the while loop because it isn't indented for spaces as these three are. You see, these three are clearly inside the while loop because of this indentation here. So this overall is the while. We can see we have this keyword here. We have this, which is the conditional test, which is asking, is I less than three? Now that's either going to be true or false. And here you can see we have the necessary colon that goes along with all of Python's constructs. And there's no different with this particular while construct. Now what I wish to do is to run this program and show how it executes line by line. Here we can see the program runtime. Let's have a look at each line of the code in turn and see how this runtime is produced. Well, we can start off here where we have got print, I am a string before the while iteration. And we can see that that outputs this particular line in the program here. We then come to this point, which says let I equal zero. So we'll keep a note of I being zero here. What we now do, we come to this line and what this is doing it's asking is i less than three which means is zero less than three because i we know is storing zero and we can see in fact it is true consequently we enter the loop and we execute this particular line here 
I am a string within the loop and we can see that appears here. Now we then go on to execute this line which is saying print the value of i is and then there's the concatenate symbol followed by str brackets i which will convert what i currently has to a string and of course this will now output this the value of i is zero which is correct because it was set to zero just before we went into the loop and it's still zero as we can see we then come to this line let i equal the current value of i plus one in other words we're incrementing i now there's another way to do this with augmented assignment operators but i prefer to do it this way so i now will be one so it's no longer zero so we can change it to one as we can see here what we now have to realize is we go back to this point here we do this conditional test again and we ask is i less than three well it is because it's one one is less than three which is true so we go into the loop again and we do this here print i am a string within the loop which produces this line in the computer program and of course we then go on to execute this line and that outputs this the value of i is one which it is because we incremented it last time we went round the loop and of course here we now perform this line which increments i so i is now two we have to realize that we go back to this and we ask is i less than three well it is because it's two so that's true so now we execute this line again which we can see is here i am a string within the loop then we execute this line which is saying the value of i is well it converts it to a string and of course it's going to be converting the two so this is what we get at the output the value of i is two and then we increment i so i will now become three at which point we have to realize we go back to here and we ask is three less than three well it isn't so this is false so we leave the loop and we go straight to this particular line here and we can see that this now outputs the string to the console as we can see here so that's the execution around this particular program we've seen what happened when the test is true and we've seen what happens when the test is false check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python.